Hello, welcome to eTeachers 365, where education and culture meet. My name is Elaine Johnson, wife, mother, educator. Today I'm going to read a story called, Let's Talk About Race. It was written by Julius Lester and illustrated by Karen Barber. I am a story. So are you. So is everyone. My story begins the same way yours does. I was born on blank. Take me, for example. I was born on January 27, 1939, in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm kind of old, huh? How does your story begin? Many people and many, event, many events are part of my story, and yours too. The names of our parents and where they were born, whether or not we have brothers or sisters. I had a brother who was nine years older than me, but he is dead. What kind of work our parents do or did? My father was a minister and my mother was a homemaker. My story and yours have many elements, such as favorite foods, minus fish, hobbies, I like crossword puzzles, take photographs, and to cope. Favorite color, red or maybe green, but I like orange and purple too. I think my favorite color is all of them. Religion, I'm Jewish. Nationality, I'm from the United States. Favorite time of day, night. Oh, there's something else that's a part of my story. It's part of yours too. That's what race we are. I'm black. What race are you? Just as I am a story and you are a story, and countries tell stories about themselves. Race is a story too. Whether you're black like me, you're Asian or Hispanic or white, each race has a story about itself. And that story is almost always the same. My race is better than your race. Some stories are true, some are not. Those who say my race is better than your race are telling a story that is not true. Why would some people say their race is better than another? Because they feel bad about themselves, because they are afraid, because... But there are other ways all of us, even me, even you, think we are better than others, I'm better than you because I live in blank. I'm better than you because I go to blank school. I'm better than you because I'm a boy. I'm better than you because I'm a girl. I'm better than you because my dad or mom makes more money than your dad or mom. I'm better than you because I'm white. I'm better than you because I'm black. I'm better than you because I'm Hispanic. I'm better than you because I'm Asian. None of this, none of these stories are true, are they? I want to tell you a true story, but I need your help. Here's what I want you to do. Take your fingers and press them softly against your skin, right below your eyes. Be careful and don't poke yourself in the eye. Okay, now press gently until you feel the hard bone right beneath the surface. Now, if your mom, dad, brother, sister, or friend is close by, ask them if you can touch them. If they say okay, take your fingers and press softly at the same place beneath their eyes. Press gently until you feel the hard bones right beneath the skin. Now press someplace else on their body, on your arms, chest, head. Press anywhere until you feel the hard bones beneath your skin. Beneath everyone's skin are the same hard bones. If you were to go outside without your skin on and without your hair on your head, turn the page and see what you would look like.
But you want to know something? If I went outside without my skin, my stomach, my mustache, and the hair on my head, what little I have left, I would look just like you, and you would look just like me. Suppose, just suppose one day we, I mean everyone, in the whole world decided to take off all our clothes, and all our skin, and all our hair. Then we would do what we do normally, every day. Go to school, go to work, play, and shop. Everything would be normal, except we would look at each other and couldn't tell who was a man, who was a woman, who was white, black, Hispanic, or Asian. Which story shall we believe? The one that says my race is better than your race? Or the one we just discovered for ourselves? Beneath our skin, I look like you and you look like me. And she looks like her and him and he looks like him and her. And we look like them and they look, at, look like us. When I look at you, which story do I see? Do I see only the color of your skin, the shape of your eyes, the texture of your hair? Do I look at you and think I know your story when I don't even know your name? Or do I look at you and wonder, what's your name? When were you born? Where were you born? Where do you live? What do you like? What don't you like? Gee, maybe we like and dislike some of the same things. Your race is not all that you are. My race is not all that I am. I am black, but I am also a man. I am of medium height. I have a deep voice and a loud laugh. I love to laugh, do you? I live in a big house in the woods in a small town. I like pancakes and macaroni and cheese. And, and, I am so, so, so many things besides my race. To know my story, you have to put together everything I am. Like, I bet you didn't know I have asthma. Beneath the skin, we all look alike. You and me. I'll take off my skin. Will you take off yours? So why did I choose Let's Talk About Race? I hope that after you listen to the story, you could kind of tell. We know that we are all part of the human race. What I love to see in this book are the beautiful pictures and illustrations depicting different ethnicities and different races. And I think the biggest a uh, point of the book is to ask questions. What do you like? What do you? What are your dislikes? Who are you? Where were you born? Um, who are your parents? When you ask questions deeper than what's on the surface, like what is your race, you really get to know someone and that's where you build connections. So as a third grade teacher, I will read this in my classroom. As a parent, I will talk with my students and my children about this title. Let's talk about race. I think in these times that it's important that we have open, honest conversations with not only our family, but also our friends. And ask questions is how we get to know one another. We know that we are 99.9% .9 alike. It's only that 0.1% that makes the color of our eyes and the shade of our skin and the texture of our hair. So we should be mindful to continue to have conversations about race that maybe go beneath the surface level of what you look like but also to start asking deeper questions of ourselves and our children and our students to really start making connections with one another. Um, so let's talk about race. It's just the beginning of the conversation. You can decide as a mother, or parent, or educator how deep you would like to go into the conversation. But the main thing is to have the conversation and to be open and willing to share your experiences and your feelings and also to talk to other people of different races so that you can also see the similarities and differences. And in a classroom, what I would do is have a Venn diagram, have the children compare and contrast, 
And they're always so surprised at how much they have in common. Um, and also you could do the same thing within your own family with Venn diagrams comparing and contrasting. So let's talk about race, Julius Lester.